Hey, what's up triathletes, Taryn here. Today I'm gonna to talk about four common triathlon mistakes that a lot of people make out there, what you can do in triathlon training to get ahead of this so you don't make these mistakes in the race. You're gonna end up getting faster, so stick around for it. The first really common triathlon mistake that a lot of people make is that they can't swim straight in open water. They might be saying, yeah, but I just follow the toes that are in front of me. But would you follow the person that's speeding on the highway by 20 miles an hour? No. You want to control yourself in open water because there are a lot of dumb toes out there. <sighs> so what you want to do is get good open water swim technique that'll help you swim straight and you want to learn how to sight that'll keep you in a straight line. Some of the things that'll help you swim in a straight line that you can work on in the pool are evening out your stroke by learning bilateral breathing. On the left side, that's the right, and the left side, that's the left. And by balancing out your stroke so that it's more symmetrical, ideally, you'll be swimming in a straighter line. One way to test this out is by swimming with a snorkel and seeing if you veer from side to side, or if you're really gutsy, you can swim with your eyes closed and see how far down the lane you can get while staying on the black line. This is really tough, so start slowly and see if you can build up to it. So do a lot of work in the pool to even out your stroke and make it as easy for you as possible to go in a straight line before you even get into open water where it'll be a lot tougher. So if you've got that evened out stroke, then it becomes how do you point yourself in a straight line? And this has to do with sighting. So a few things that you need to know about sighting. Number one is your sighting technique should be very subtle. I'll link to a video, go up here, somewhere around there where I talk about open water triathlon training that you can do in the pool before you get out into open water. A lot of it has to do with just a very subtle sight, pulling just your eyes out of the water, leaving your nose in the water, and then moving your head to the side slightly to get that breath. It's not about lifting your entire body because that is gonna cause your legs to whip out from side to side, make your legs sink down, you're gonna whip around, and you're gonna slow yourself down. So that sighting technique should be very, very subtle. And the next thing that you should do for good sighting technique is not to sight the water, but to sight landmarks that are on shore. So what I'll often do before a race is I'll get into the water and I'll swim out to some of the buoys and I'll look to the left and to the right and I'll look at the swim exit and I'll see if on shore there are trees or power lines and I'll pick those sight lines as opposed to looking in the water. So having that longer away distance, it's gonna keep you straighter and hopefully it's going to be a bigger structure that you're gonna be able to see easier. So as you start taking that subtle sight, every four or five strokes, you look and you're looking for that landmark on shore. The second really common triathlon mistake that a lot of runners make is that they fade dramatically in the first few miles of the run. Often this is because of cramping up. I was a very big victim of this probably in my first two or three years of triathlon training. And what I found really worked is getting my body used to brick training. I mentioned brick workouts in a lot of my triathlon training videos as the most important aspect of tri training because that little second where you hop off the bike and all of a sudden your body has to reroute blood flow into your legs and support its body weight for the first time in the race is a very tough thing for your body to do if it hasn't been trained to do that blood reroute very quickly. So what you wanna do is incorporate brick training going from the bike to the run quite a bit in your tri training. If you haven't done at least six brick workouts in the previous four or five weeks before a race, your body isn't really going to be tuned to do well in that first few miles of the run. You're gonna cramp up, you're gonna stiffen up, it's gonna feel awkward, your body's gonna feel heavy, and then the entire run is going to be a mess for you. So if you can get your body used to rerouting that blood flow very quickly by doing a lot of brick workouts, all of a sudden the start of the run is a time that you can just settle in and let your body get ready for the rest of the race. The third triathlon mistake that a lot of people make is that they fall apart in the final few miles of the run. And while the last issue had to do with cramping, this issue has a lot more to deal with how much you're fueling and how much you've trained coming into the race. To battle this issue, you should be doing two things. Number one is increase your training volume. If you can't actually go the distance at race pace that your actual race is, you're not gonna be able to go that race pace for that period of time. 
How you can combat this is by doing what I call over distances. So in half Ironman training, for instance, I know that I'm going to have to bike 90 kilometers. I don't get myself ready to bike 90 kilometers. I do my training as 130, 140 kilometers. So that all of a sudden when I get to that faster race pace at a shorter distance, it doesn't feel like it's taking nearly as long and my body is accepting that I've got to go for that period of time. I'll do the same with running, incorporating 24 and 25 kilometer runs so that when I'm doing a 21 kilometer run, it doesn't feel so long. And you also need to train your body to be able to do race pace. So if the only time that you've ever gone that fast is in the race and you haven't ever done any speed work leading up to that race, you're gonna blow your legs apart and they're gonna be destroyed by the end of that race. So incorporate a fair bit of over distances and a bit of speed work in your training leading up to a race. And then the second issue that you need to think about is fueling properly. This is worth an entire playlist and I've got a couple of videos that again, I'll link to all in the places. And this is something that you're going to have to figure out. Typically, you wanna take anywhere in between about two to 300 calories every half hour in the race and enough electrolytes and fluid so that you're hydrated. You're gonna to have to figure out on your own through trial and error whether bars work, chews, gels, just electrolyte and energy drinks work for you, but that's a bit of a starting point. Shoot for about four to 500 calories every hour and about 16 ounces of fluid with some electrolytes. And the fourth triathlon mistake that might be keeping you from getting fast is that your transitions are brutally slow. This is a pet peeve of mine because I notice a lot of people setting up shop and having a friggin' picnic in the triathlon transition. That's not the place to settle yourself down. The place to settle yourself down in between the swim and the bike and the run is in the first few kilometers of each discipline. So instead of taking it easy in the transition, you wanna take it easy in the first few kilometers of the bike or the first few kilometers of the run. The transition should be a place that is very, very minimal. You shouldn't have to put on a lot of equipment. You shouldn't have to change much clothes. You shouldn't have to put on suntan lotion or body butter or tune your bike or relace your shoes or take pictures or set up a GoPro. Your goal in the triathlon transition should be to get in quickly and then get out quickly. This doesn't mean that you need to be getting your heart rate up by racing through it, but go through it at a steady pace and take anything that you would otherwise be doing in transition out with you onto the bike or the run. If you can't carry it with you onto the bike or the run, you're probably doing too much. So I believe in a very, very minimal transition and doing the majority of the work to prep for the rest of the race out in the race so that you're still moving forward. And again, I've got videos on this all here, 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 description all over the places. Less is more in transition, remember that. So there you have it triathletes. I think with those four tips, you're going to be able to avoid a lot of the triathlon errors that a lot of early triathletes make in the first few years of getting into the sport. Not a big deal because they're easy fixes. So take heed my friends, take heed. Smart stuff today, even without the coffee. As always, happy and hard training triathletes and good luck in your next triathlon. Zoop. Whoop. Whoop. The first really common triathlon mis- I haven't had any coffee yet. This is becoming an issue. <clears throat>